this video, we will be talking about the post-translational modifications of proteins, as well as the chaperone protein. Let's make sure we're all on the same page before we begin. As a reminder, DNA gets transcribed into mRNA, and mRNA gets translated into proteins. After proteins are made, there are some modifications that can be done to it. This process is called post-translational modifications. There are two parts of post-translational modifications. You can have trimming as well as covalent alterations. Let's first discuss trimming. When the protein is made, there is an N terminal and a C terminal. So let's look over here. This is the N terminal and the C terminal. The N terminus, which is also known as the amino terminus, NH2 terminus, or N terminal end, is the start of a protein or polypeptide. The C terminus over here is the end of the amino acid chain and it has a free carboxyl group, the COOH. So now that we know what the N terminus and C terminus is, we can talk about trimming. In trimming, there is removal of the N or C terminal propeptides from the zymogen and the zymogen is essentially an immature protein. So removal of the N or C terminal propeptides can make a zymogen, an immature protein, into a mature protein. An example of this is trimming trypsinogen, which turns it into trypsin. This enzyme is important because it's made by the pancreas and it's a digestive enzyme. It will digest the pancreas if it's turned into trypsin in the pancreas. So you want to make sure that trypsinogen isn't activated too early on. So we want to make sure that trypsinogen is turned into trypsin in the right location. Something cool about this is that hereditary pancreatitis is caused by trypsinogen molecules that become prematurely activated in the pancreas. So that is trimming. Now let's talk a little bit about covalent alterations. This is mostly just memorization. Essentially what happens here is that you have certain groups that are added onto the protein once the protein is made. So different types of covalent alterations include phosphorylation, glycosylation, hydroxylation, methylation, acetylation, and ubiquination. And here is all of them. There's a little bit more than what I talked about. And so hydroxylation, you can see, is adding a hydroxyl group. Methylation adds a methyl group. Acetylation adds an acetyl group. Ubiquination adds a ubiquitin. Glycosylation adds a sugar. And phosphorylation adds a phosphate group. Lastly, let's turn our attention to chaperone proteins. So this is a rough diagram of what a chaperone protein may do. So a chaperone protein is an intracellular protein that helps with protein folding. So as you can see over here, you have an unfolded protein, and then it goes into the chaperone, and the chaperone helps fold it. A little fun fact is that in yeast, there's a protein called heat shock proteins. These are chaperone proteins that are expressed at high temperatures to prevent protein denaturation and misfolding, because we know that usually high temperatures degrade protein. One last interesting fact is that cystic fibrosis can occur due to impaired post-translational processing in which improper folding and glycosylation of the CFTR channel protein results in a misfolded protein that gets retained in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, let's briefly sum up the important facts of this video. Post-translational modifications of proteins include trimming as well as covalent modifications. Chaperones are also involved after proteins are synthesized by ensuring that the protein is folded properly, but they can also make sure other protein are folded properly. For example, right here, a denatured protein or a damaged protein can also be taken by a chaperone and folded back into its original form. Thank you for watching this video. If you got this far, please give this video a like. Comment below with questions or if you want us to make a video on a different topic. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a future video.